Hey everyone, today we have something special. This is a new VTX, the Race V3. And what's cool about the Race V3 is it's everything the Race V2 was, but smaller and a little bit better. The other thing is it runs on 5 volt, just like the Whoop Lite runs on 5 volt. Uh, so you can run this on any FC. So I think that this is going to make converting to HD0 way easier. Um, no special FCs needed, and it's pretty uh, thin width, about the width of typical FCs. So let's get into it. So here it is, the Race V3. Um, it's got a pre-soldered wiring harness that can plug into most HD FCs, or you can just cut that off and then wire it up yourself. But at least then you only have to wire up half of it. So that's pretty cool. It does run on uh, anywhere from four volt up to 12 volt. So that's gonna work on most FCs. Um, requires a one and a half amp five volt back on an FC if you're gonna run it on five volt. Um, it's got this brass hold down and the nuts are actually pre-soldered, right? So we don't have to go and figure out how to secure those nuts on the back side. Those are automatically gonna be installed from factory, which is what we need because those were really difficult before. Um, yeah, really uh, good width, not too long. Um, see the smiley face in the corner there by my thumb? That's because this is actually the third revision of this Race V3. I'll show you the progression of how that was developed. Um, but first, let's take a look and see how this VTX compares in size and width and stuff to the other VTXs. So here's the Race V3 compared to the Race V2. Um, yeah, I'll just put them like this so you can see the difference. So the Race V2 on the right is going to be uh, 34 by 34 millimeter, and then the Race V3 is 28 millimeter by 32 millimeter. So quite a bit less wide, and then um, you can also tell that it is not as long. So. The way you achieve this um, is by putting a chip on the back side of the board in addition to the top side, where you can see on this, it's got everything on the top. Um, this one had a pretty uh, big design flaw in that the power amplifier, that's the thing that makes the signal um, get to 25 milliwatt or 200 milliwatt, was in the corner of the board here, right here where my finger is. And that was obviously a lot more susceptible to damage um, being on the corner. And if you look on this one, this is the power amplifier right here. So it's nice um, and away from the edge of the board, which is what you need for something to be durable. So that's good. All right, let, let's take a look at how this uh, compares to the Whoop Light, because I know a lot of guys are running the Whoop Light. Um, so right off the bat, I can say the VTX is less wide than the Whoop Light, even at the narrowest part of the Whoop Light, um, if, even if you took the, the corners off of the tabs off of the Whoop Light. Also, it has a way to hold down the UFL, which is really important. You don't want that UFL to come off and then cause damage. Um, it has a thicker PCB, so if I look right here, this is like a standard thickness 1.6 millimeter PCB compared to the thin PCB on the Whoop Light. Um, so thin PCBs are good for weight, but bad for dur durability. Um, other things, there are some larger size components on this board. So if you look, you can see these capacitors. These are capacitors right here, the brown ones. Those are larger package size caps which are going to be more durable and easier to hand repair if you ever have to repair this. Where if we look on the Whoop Light, it's got smaller package size components to keep the weight down, but that is going to decrease durability. So this thing has been holding up really good. Um, I just got back from Multi-GPIO uh, where we're flying like hundreds of packs through and uh, I, I did not break any VTXs, um, so I had a fleet of about four quads with 
race v3s in it uh, but not just one revision of the race v3 i had all three revisions of the race v3 so let's get into like what's different about that so this was the first revision of the race v3 it's a bit wider um, and it had the tabs on it basically to put a metal shield onto it um, and having that made it bigger overall and i don't think anyone was going to use the metal shield anyway the other thing is uh, if you look real close here i had to do a little bit of rework um, with this black wire here and the capacitor and stuff because this early vtx didn't uh, supply enough power to the nano 90. Um, so that'd be a little it wouldn't work quite right so that was the first revision of the race v3 been testing this since I don't know, February probably, maybe earlier. Um, this is the second revision of the Race V3, so it's nice and uh, narrow. Um, it's got a smiley face on it too. But um, if we look close, this one also had a little bit of an issue with not enough power for the uh, camera. So there's a little bit of a capacitor there in the corner. Um, it's working great though. I mean, I flew it at IO. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't throw away these prototype boards. I just keep on using them and fixing them if they need to be, uh, have some rework on them like that capacitor. And then here is the final version. Um, and it's all good. Got that pre-soldered wiring harness. I just plugged it straight into this T-Motor FC. Awesome. Super easy. I just took it out of the box. I didn't have to do any soldering just threw this thing on here and it worked um, so good good stuff you'll be able to buy this VTX from most major resellers in the United States and elsewhere as well as um, from DiviMatch directly HD zero shop there will be a link in the description below um, one more thing is this VTX does have a second hardware UART on it so that's gonna be in the corner here, um, this corner right here. And that is used for tramp control. Uh, so the Race V2 has a smart audio connection, um, a second UART, but it's actually a soft serial UART. Um, so it doesn't work with all uh, protocols because it's got to do everything through software. And this Race V3 does have a second hardware UART on it. And the idea with that is you can wire a ghost receiver directly to the VTX to have ghost directly control the uh, VTX. So you can just change channels and power and stuff like that on the back of your ghost module. And then it will change things automatically on the VTX without having anything set up on Betaflight. So I know that's a pretty big deal to a few of you running ghost. And um, it's not done yet. I haven't tested it because I don't have Ghost, and I don't really plan to have Ghost. I'm just using ExpressLRS, but I know a lot of people really don't like ExpressLRS. They want to use their Ghost, um, which is fine. So eventually, it will work. I do have a demo video here um, that I can point you to that shows that the uh, Ghost functionality does work. You can change channel and power uh, from the Ghost transmitter, and it'll change it on. The VTX. So that's that. Um, hope you like the Race V3 as much as I do. Uh, I love the simplicity of it. It's great. One last thing, um, just doing a little funny clip here at the end. Um, let's call him Field Reporter Ryan. Uh, quick installed the VTX out in the field in about uh, three minutes and went out in a fluid. So we'll end the video with that. Enjoy. Okay, got a new VTX. You want to see it, Andy? I do. What's it look like? Uh, it's, it's way smaller than the current one. It looks like a V2, though. No, 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 no. That, that, that's it, right there. Wow. It looks the same. Oh. Oh, crap. It actually is smaller. Wow. That's impressive. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it is. It comes with a wiring harness. Wow. You mean I don't have to know how to solder? <laughs> okay, let's put this on our drone. 
see what else is in this here. Oops. So we got gummies and uh, a hold down for the UFL antenna. That's what we need. You can pause it for now. All right, you're good. All right, so I'm gonna put this on a T-Motor F7 HD. It's got a DJI plug on it. That means I can just plug this straight in. Of course, you wanna double check on the manual that the, the wires are lining up right, but uh, a lot of them do. And I think I'm gonna do it like this. I'm just gonna lay it on like that. Look at that. I didn't have to solder anything. And it's about the same size as the flight controller. Cool. You can, yes, you can run it so the uh, antenna's in the back and the MIPI's in the front, but I'm actually going to flip it around and put the antenna in the front and the MIPI in the back because my antenna's really long and my MIPI's also long, so. That's what she said. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that, that's what she said. Okay, so I'll just start putting this on. Now we'll put the antenna on. This will be like the fastest VTX install ever. There's that. And because I don't like to break UFL connectors on boards, I'm going to put this clamp on. And I'm going to put it on the right way. You know that the, uh, the nuts are actually soldered on there for us, so I don't have to get all awkward about it. That's what she said. This will be the first uh, not G-rated review I've done. Some precision hand action there. <laughs> so you want to get it so that it starts to bend the brass bar, uh, but no further, okay? Just want a little bit of uh, bend in it. That's what she said. <laughs> Get that like that. All right. Now let's get our MIPI installed. Pop this up here. Actually, put the MIPI down before I put this on. And the MIPI goes towards the middle like that. I usually tack it down with some E6000, but since we're doing this in the field, we'll skip that step. Two more nuts, and we're done. That's what she said. All right, yeah, that's probably the fastest VTX install I've ever done in my life. Straight out of the box. You know, the wiring harness is already on there, the nuts are already on there uh, for the uh, UFL clamp. Awesome. Look how small that thing is. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's power it up. Ooh, we got blinkies. A video. Yeah, that's a video. Yeah. Video, OSD, pet mode, switching, 90 FPS cam, it all works. Sweet. All happy smiles. <laughs> so we'll just put the... Uh, Top plate back on. Yeah. Okay, look at that. Look how tight that is. Lots and lots of protection. 